at seven minutes past ten. Time for the Sears Radio Theater, partner. The Sears Radio Theater presents Lorne Green as your host for an exciting Western drama of today. You mean the headaches will go away now that I'm blind? Miss Conkle, get some compresses of sodium and septothal. I won't drink it. Our program, Final Fall, will begin after this message from your local station. Up to two miles now. Sure wish I'd started this about 20 years ago. Take it easy, Pugsley. Hi, Mr. Kessler. Hello, kids. Say hello, Pugsley. Okay, about four more blocks and we're home. Time to sprint. Let's go, Pugsley. Over a year ago, Tom Kessler had a heart attack. He never misses his nightly run these days. But before his heart attack, the most exercise Tom got was pushing a pool cue. Regular exercise alone won't guarantee that you'll never have a heart attack, but it will increase your blood flow, relax you, make you feel better. Don't wait until you've had a heart attack to start exercising. See your doctor this week, and the two of you can come up with an exercise program that's right for you. For more information, contact your American Heart Association. We're fighting for your life. This is Lorne Green. We are in the north woods of Minnesota. Once the land was covered with virgin timber, stands of pine that shot 200 feet into the air. In the early part of this century, logging companies moved in and clear-cut the vast sylvan tracts which had once been the hunting and fishing grounds of the Ojibwe and Sioux Indians. In a small clearing in these woods, lost in a maze of lakes, stands an ancient log cabin. The occupant of this dwelling is Anders Fritzen, an old half-breed lumberjack who lives a hermit's life except for a single friend, Clarence Egan, the local postman. Clarence visits Andy almost daily, even though Andy never gets any mail. The two men drink coffee and play cribbage. Andy is a loner, to all appearances content and self-sufficient. But as the years go by, he's become more and more like his Ojibwe forebears, stoic and cautious. Egan is a hard-nosed man of affairs in the metropolis of Calvin, population 360. His ambitions reach far beyond his postal duties. Yet without his regular visits, Andy would be alone and probably helpless. Which is why the old man wears a kerchief over his eyes as he works. He's practicing blindness, as he calls it. And that's just the beginning of our story. Sears Radio Theater, a new adventure in radio listening, brought to you five nights a week by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears where America shops. Your hosts, Lorne Green. I'll bring you stories of the Old West and the New. Andy Griffith with a look at the funny side of life. Vincent Price with tales of mystery and suspense. Cicely Tyson with stories about love, hate, and related things. Richard Whitmark. I'll bring you stories of pure adventure. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week. Brought to you in Elliot Lewis' production of The Sears Radio Theater. Our story, Final Fall by Percy Granger. Our stars, William Shallert and Parley Bear. I sell draperies at Sears. Yesterday, a lady came in and said that she'd been in and out of about every store in town looking for draperies and at this point didn't know what she wanted anymore. I asked questions about her tastes and decor and then made suggestions. She was thrilled. She found what she wanted and learned a little, too. It made me feel good to know that I helped her out. Sears people are friendly people who help you find what you want. Sears, 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 where America shops. 
suit to own, if you could own only one, is on sale at Sears. The $119 four-piece vested is now $89, a $30 savings. The suit, contrasting slacks, and reversible vest make six different outfits. The four-piece vested suit, it should be the suit you own. On sale for $89 until February 24th in larger Sears men's stores. Style, sense, satisfaction. Sears men's store. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. I love to eat. But it takes so long to cook. That's why we both love our new Kenmore microwave oven from Sears. I can cook a five-pound roast medium rare in just 30 minutes or three strips of bacon in three and a half minutes on a paper plate. Bake two potatoes in eight minutes and cook vegetables faster than boiling them in water. That means less time in the kitchen. And more with you. Fast, clean, cool cooking with Sears Kenmore microwave ovens, all with automatic defrost. Choose the right model for your kitchen from the many styles available at most Sears retail stores. Sarge, this is Officer Murray. Women carrying babies have been going into Sears all day long. All week long, Officer. What? It's baby week at Sears, Murray. A great time for play suits, snap side shirts, play pens, Jenny Lynn baby furniture, blankets, and a whole lot more. Mothers and mothers to be shop Sears all during baby week. Come on, Sarge. How come you know all this? Because my wife and Sarge Jr. are probably at Sears right now. Because Sears has baby buys bundled up. <laughs> Andy Fritzen's cabin was way out beyond the end of Clarence Egan's mail route, on a remote corner of a small Indian reservation. All the other Indians, those who hadn't chosen to move away years ago, were dead. Andy was the last survivor, and the only person who saw him regularly was old Clarence. Andy? Yeah, yeah. Andy? Uh, do you want to give me a hand with this dang box of groceries? Who's that? You know darn well who it is. Oh, hello, Egan. All right, I'll bite. What the heck you got that cloth tied around your eyes for? I'm practicing blindness. Crazy half-breed. <laughs> they got snow predicted for today, and you're yanking around out here half-naked. Oh, I'm a tough old crow, Egan. You know, I can go to 20 below before I even have to put laces in my boots. Besides, it ain't going to snow till tonight, you gloomy Bulgarian. You know more than the radio? Got to, since I don't have one. Well, you ought to get yourself one. Using what for money? There. Guess I've had this blindfold on long enough for one day. Your eyes are getting worse, huh? The other senses are taking up the slack. You ain't got nothing in all them Indian herbs of yours that'll cure blindness? Nope. The only cure for blindness is clean ears. Well, if you're here, I reckon I must be hungry. You were hungry an hour ago. I'm late today. Oh. And how is Portia Souk, the bearded widow of the North Woods? I caught her pickling eggs again. It drives me crazy. Her whole cellar's full of them. You never know when there's going to be trouble, she says. Now, what kind of trouble are you going to settle with a cellar full of pickled eggs? You missed the point, Egan. What kind of trouble are you going to get into with a cellar full of pickled eggs? It's a waste of time. Well, then marry her, like you're always threatening to do. I might just do that. You just might, huh? Yeah, I might just. Mm. I had about all of this day I want. Mm-hmm. I ought to quit this mail route altogether. Yeah. I'm going to. Sure. When the fish get lost in the woods. 36 years of... Well, the route's treated you pretty good. Kept you in widows as far back as I can remember. Yeah, but things is changing around here, Andy. There's real estate folks coming up from the Twin Cities, sniffing around, making deals. Sit down and finish your cigar while I stack this wood. Now they've raised the water level on the lake, the fish will be coming in, and fish means tourists. Oh, Clarence, everyone knows your real talent ain't delivering the mail. It's poaching. Yeah, and that's getting harder to do, too. Now all them land speculators are yanking around. You know that new sheriff down in Bryant? He confiscated my trap lines yesterday. He didn't. Why, you've been poaching longer than he's been alive. I know, I know that. I don't understand people these days. They take everything so seriously. 
like they was the first people in the world to ever have their jobs. No respect. No nothing. Well, you can't quit, Clarence. You know what that'd make me. A hermit. <laughs> there. Wood's all stacked. Put out that cigar, would you? And come on in the cabin. I'll heat up the coffee, get down the cribbage for it. Listen. As long as I'm here, I... I I've been given a certain matter some thought. I... I believe you should pack up and move into town. Move into town? Well, you ain't getting no younger. I'd be in the circus if I was. And, and how are you going to manage out here when you go all the way blind? That won't be any problem. I know where everything is. What would I do with a town? What would a town do with me? They'd probably lock me up. Lock you up? What for? I'm old. I'm half Indian. They'd find some excuse. They don't lock you up unless you do something. Or unless you can't do something. I can stand in the middle of my cabin here, reach out and touch my whole life. What would I be in town but another old man who feels the cold? Well, suppose I wanted to quit, huh? Who'd bring you your flour and sugar and coffee, which, by the way, you don't even make decent? Well, Egan, I'd get on somehow. Don't let me stop you. Oh, how could I move into town anyway? I only got $300. That's got to last me the rest of my life. Out here, that means six, seven years. In town, I'd be broke by Christmas. I'd have to be dead by New Year's. No, thank you kindly. <laughs> Hello, Egan. Put out your cigar and come on in. Andy. Coffee be ready in a minute. Why don't you yank down the cribbage, boy? I ain't got time for no cribbage today. Sure you do. Andy, you got a letter. I did. Who from? Here. Bureau of Indian Affairs. What do they want? How would I know? Open it. I told them I didn't want anything to do with them. As far as I'm concerned, this isn't their land. Just open it. Hey, it's already been opened. Egan? Oh, don't squawk. I sealed it up again, didn't I? Uh, are they going to evict me? Is that what this is? Andy. I've lived here a long time. Have they, have they changed the law? Just open the letter and read it. Dear Mr. Fritzen, in reparation for 40 acres Ojibwe reservation pursuant to Article 5 of Treaty, there's a check. $10,000, Andy. What are you going to do? Sit down. You can move into town now. Town? Well, sure, they ain't going to lock up nobody with $10,000. You could get yourself some new clothes, cut a figure, buy a round. When's the last time you went to the movies? The movies? And you could get your eyes fixed. How? Oh. Well, they got operations now. That costs money. You got money right there. You mean not go blind? They can fix you up good as new. I don't know. I'd, I'd already accepted going blind. Well, you don't have to. They, they can patch you up, make you a new man. Here, you... You take this back. Why? I don't want it. I can't take it. Why not? This land ain't for sale. It belongs to my people. Your people? All right, my mother's people. But it ain't mine to sell. I'm only a caretaker. You ain't selling it. It goes back to the government anyway. Soon as you die, you know that. Why'd they send me this? Well, how should I know? Andy, I got an idea. Let's go up to Weekly's bar. 
Wait, Cleese. What for? A celebration. You're rich. I ain't moving. Okay, okay, you ain't moving. But when was the last time you were off your place? <laughs> I don't remember. Well, okay, then. Let's go. Uh, I got some more wood to cut. Oh, duff. You got enough wood put up to last you three years. Now, come on. I, I got some sourdough rising. I can't leave that for too long. And, and that Don't storm... Don't worry about the storm. I'll have you back before it hits. I, I'd better not. Why not? The, the old Jipway, my mother's people, they said as long as a man was on his own land, he was strong. If he left it, he became old, unreliable... Well, you don't have to rely on that stuff anymore, Andy. You're rich. <laughs> well, <laughs> okay. But one beer, one song, Egan. That's my limit. <laughs> Dear, today I found the bedroom suite of my dreams at a great price. That's a coincidence. I found one that has all the features. Well, mine has authentic country styling. So does mine. Does yours have a beautiful 26-step finish? Nothing but, and I get a choice of 13 different pieces. All built to last for a long time? Yes, with sturdy tongue and groove construction and dovetail jointed drawers. Is yours Sears, Sears open, open Hearth Bedroom, bedroom furniture? furniture? Sears Open Hearth Bedroom Collection. Expert craftsmanship at a reasonable price. Select from 13 different pieces. Now at most Sears retail stores. Can't believe you owe the IRS that much? Well, when things just don't add up, you can count on a Sears desk calculator to help you add up what you don't owe. Add, subtract, multiply, and divide, then read the figures two different ways. 12-digit display or tape printout. There's a two-memory system that helps ease multi-step problems. Plus, its many extras make it a great time saver. Sears two-memory desk calculator now cut $25, just $99.99 through March 10th at most Sears retail stores. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. The suit to own, if you could own only one, is on sale at Sears. The $119 four-piece vested is now $89, a $30 savings. The suit, contrasting slacks, and reversible vest make six different outfits. The four-piece vested suit, it should be the suit you own. On sale for $89 until February 24th in larger Sears men's stores. Style, sense, satisfaction, Sears men's store. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Cut it. And love it during Sears Home Center Sale. We've cut $20 off the price of Sears Best Craftsman Motorized Miter Box. It's a cut above manual with a motor that develops one and a half horsepower to let you rough or finish cut most types of stock. You'll get quick, precise cross cuts, miters, and bevels with a single downstroke. Sears Motorized Miter Box, cut $20, now only $179.99. Sears Home Center Sale till February 24th. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Available at most Sears retail stores. They ran down the rutted road in Egan's small mail truck, heading for Weekly's bar for a drink and a song. The sky was made of lead, signaling a coming winter storm. Hang on to your legs, Andy. Boy, are they going to be surprised up at Weekly's bar when they see who I got with me. The sky's getting worse, Egan. That storm's moving in faster than I thought. Oh, don't worry. You know, I've been thinking what you could do with some of that money. You could get your access road graded proper. What for? I don't use it. Well, you could buy an old pickup truck to get you around. I can't drive. You could get some lessons. Who'd give me a license with my eyesight? Get that operation. Hmm. Sounds like soon as I cash this check, I'm going to be spending it till it's gone. Yes, that's the whole point. You can finally get yourself fixed up. <laughs> Hey, Ollie, guess who just pulled up? Who? Clarence Egan. Oh, yeah. Well, I hope he... Guess who's got with him? Quinn Shaver. Andy Fritzen. Dang, you made me miss my shot. It is, look. Hello, Jenny. Hi, Clarence. Andy. Hi, Jenny. Hey, Lester. Ollie, come over here. Uh, hi. <laughs> Andy's come into a windfall from Uncle Sam. They just sent him $10,000. I, uh, I'm buying a round of drinks. <laughs> We're coming. <laughs> uh, you, you have one too, Jenny. Thank you, Andy. 
So you finally wrote down and asked the government for your reparation, huh? No, they they just sent it to me. Ah, here you go, boys. <laughs> To Andy's fortune. Uh, <laughs> may, may the given hand <laughs> it never falter. Over the river. <laughs> hey, that ain't bad. Well, maybe I'll get a little business from you now. How about another round? Well... Ah, oh, come on. These dinky glasses don't count for nothing. Okay. a boy, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> you... Keep it awful hot in here, Jenny. Hot? <laughs> it's only room temperature. Uh, Jenny, how much do Don't I... Don't worry, Andy. With 10000 in the bank, your credit's good. <laughs> well, it ain't in the bank yet. <laughs> Golly, I uh, wish someone give me $10,000 just for being a half-breed. Yeah. You sure that check ain't just for 5000 you, you see, Jenny, I only got 23 cents on me. That's okay. I'll start a tab for you. But, <laughs> but that's a debt. Bottoms up. Well, gents, you'll have to excuse me. I I got to visit the wherewithal. Egan. Now, don't worry, Andy. I'll be right back. Jenny, uh, how much is that now? Let's see. A dollar forty. Well, that ain't... Times two is two eighty. Oh. <laughs> Next round's on me. Wait, I'm I'm over my limit. Andy, let yourself go. <coughs> What's the matter, Andy? What's up? <laughs> oh, so all the smoke in here makes my eyes water. Oh, that's just only cigar. You'll get used to it. <laughs> Looks like the snow's starting to come down. Is it? Yeah, we're in for a real Eskimo strangler tonight. Yeah. Where's he can? It's really coming hard. I left some sourdough bread rising. Here we go, boys. Mm. Oh, well. Oh, my dream of paradise just being snowbound in a bar. <laughs> Cheers, Andy. Uh. <laughs> hey, Andy, how about a game of pool? Well, I ain't played in a long time. Now, listen, you ain't afraid of a couple old duffers like us, now, are you? I think <laughs> I need some fresh air. Yeah, rack them up, Ole. Andy, uh, you want a good cue. I'd advise... Fresh air. Andy. Huh. Yeah. Well, he's crazy, no doubt about that. You going out, out for fresh air in a, in a blizzard? Jenny, set us up another round. On me. Coming up. <laughs> Where's Andy? He stepped outside for a minute. Well, get him back in here. I got an announcement to make. I... <clears throat> I've decided to ask Portia Souk to marry me. Oh, come on. I, I have. You know, I've been tied to this route because of Andy. And I'd have quit a long time ago if it wasn't for him. But now that the government's taking care of him, I can start making other plans. <laughs> Man can't hide his light under a bushel forever, huh? <laughs> nope. <laughs> Say, where is he, anyway? Andy? Hey, Andy! Say, he... He ain't out here. He's gone. Got to get back to my land. Bunch of sharks. Smoke stinging my eyes. In debt, two dollars and eighty cents. Never should have gone. The Ojibwe knew. They knew. I got to get home before my strength is gone. Got to cross the road, go through the woods. What's that? Hey, fella, you okay? What's that? You're walking right down the middle of the road. I'm going home. Where do you live? Down the turn off from the sawmill. Well, that sawmill's five miles away. Uh, you, you better let me give you a lift. I'm okay. But you don't even have a coat. I don't mind. Come on, it's getting dark. Hop in. Well, here. There you go. Now you just holler when we get to your place. I, I don't think I can see. What? I can't see. That beer's done something to my eyes. Say, you got anyone at home can take care of you? No, but I know where everything is. Well, you you better let me drive you into Bryant. That's 40 miles away. Well, that's no trouble. I'm headed there anyways. I'll take you to the hospital. An institution? Sure. They'll fix you right up. 
Dr. Adams? Dr. Adams? Can we help you? Uh, well, I, I found this old fellow wandering the road up past Calvary. I wasn't wandering. I was going home. Yes, Mr. Uncle, what's the problem? Uh, doctor, I, I think he's gone blind. It ain't none of your business. Well, uh, let's have a look. I know I'm going blind. And I've been preparing for it. Now, now, hold still. Mm-hmm. What's that mean? Who is that? Have your eyes ever caused you pain? No, of course they have. I'm an old man. Do you get headaches? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You mean the headaches will go away now that I'm blind? Miss Kunkel, get some compresses, vitasodium, and septothal. I won't drink it. You may also be suffering from exposure. Exposure? That's a laugh. I practically live out of doors. Well, you'd better prepare a sedative as well. No! Uh, what the dinky hell hit me? Where? These sheets are too stiff. Where am I? I can't see. Huh. An institution. This stupid heat. They keep it high on purpose. Saps your strength. Oh, you're awake. Dr. Adams. I've got to get out of here. Get home. Oh, hello. How are you today? Oh, I'm fine. My eyesight's back now. I can see clear, Salark. <laughs> I don't know how you can tell that when you've still got those compresses on. Compresses? Now, how do things look? That was a stinky trick. Uh, where's my clothes? Not so fast. You're still a little weak. Uh, of course I'm weak. This room's too hot. I'd advise an operation. Operation? If you want to keep from going permanently blind. I've already accepted going blind. That's not necessary in this day and age. You can really save them? My eyes? Of course. I can schedule an operation for you first thing in the morning, if you like. And then you'll let me go? Of course. Miss Gunkel, get the necessary information on the patient. Yes, doctor. Now, I'll need to fill out a card for our file, sir. What's your name? Andy Fritzen. I mean, Anders. Anders Fritzen. Mm -hmm. And uh, where do you live, Andy? Rural Route 1, Calvin. Are you covered by Blue Cross? No. Oh, how about a company medical plan? The Basswood Lumber Company. But they went out of business 30 years ago. Oh. Well, have you got any savings? Oh, yeah. Three hundred and eighty-two dollars. Well, not to worry. I'm sure you're eligible for Medicare. What's that? A handout? If I can't afford to pay for it, I don't buy it. I'm leaving. No, wait, 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 wait. We can't let you go. Not yet. Your blood pressure is too low. It ain't too low. Everyone else's is too high. But that would still leave the question of the bill you've already run up. Bill? How much is it? A hundred and forty-seven dollars. A hundred? What for? Well, you've been here three days. Three days? Well, you've been under medication. You drug a man unconscious, and then you charge him for not leaving? <laughs> That's not quite how we look at it. No wonder I'm weak, unconscious for three days. That ain't natural. Where's my clothes? Oh, uh, behind the curtain there. But, well, you, you can't go home in just an old shirt and pants. It's too cold. Would you please turn your back so I can get dressed? Mr. Fritzen, the doctor is advised... Young lady, to... do you really do this sort of thing for a living? Well, we just need to work out some way for you to pay your bill. I was dragged here against my will, drugged unconscious, and when I take exception, I'm threatened with charity. Well, I can pay my own way... I got a check from the government here for $10,000. If you haven't robbed me, too. There. <laughs> See that? Oh. Well, then there's no problem. You can leave whenever you want. Oh, excuse me. I'll have to get this. If I can't pay, 
I got to stay here and run up a bill. If I can pay, I'm free to go. This place is an institution. I've got to get out of here. Sears Radio Theater will return after this message from your local station. What if you went off to college and found that you were different from everyone else and everything was designed for them, not for you? Suppose you went to the library and all the books you needed were in Braille and you were the only one who couldn't read. You'd feel left out, wouldn't you? And what if you went to class and found that there were no chairs because all the other students rolled in with their own wheelchairs? Suppose one of your professors gave his lectures talking with his hands only his hands, and everyone understood sign language except you. You'd think it wasn't fair. Well, that's how handicapped people feel now when they go to college and find extra handicaps. But things are changing, and we have free information that can help. Write Closer Look, Box 1492, Washington, D.C., 20013. A public service message on behalf of the United States Office of Education. Here's an important tax tip from the Internal Revenue Service. If you're 65 or older, there are some special tax breaks that you can claim. Like a double personal exemption. That's right, an extra $750 for yourself, and still another if your spouse also is 65 or older. And there are advantages if you decide to sell your home and move to a smaller place. There's also a tax credit for the elderly. They're all spelled out in one of IRS's free publications, number 554, Tax Benefits for Older Americans. You can get copies by calling the IRS toll-free number listed in your telephone directory, or you can order by mail. There's even an order form just for that purpose in each tax package. Use it to send for the Older American publication or any other IRS publication or form you need. Tax Benefits for Older Americans. Get all the details now so you can take advantage of the benefits on your tax return. Lorne Green again, and here's the concluding act, a final fall. First snowfall of winter is always like a benediction. Dang Clarence, anyways. I bet he thought he had me off my land for good. This check's been nothing but an evil talisman. Before I start home, I'm going to buy an envelope and a stamp and mail it back to the government. Where'd you get your license, a dog pound? Good. There's a five and dime. Hello. May I help you? I want to buy an envelope. Certainly. What kind? The kind you mail a letter in. Yes, but uh, Manila, airmail, business, personal... Oh, business, business. Business? Mm Mm-hmm. And what amount would you like? Amount? Well, we have them in packages of 20, 50, 100. I just need one. The 20, then? No, I just want one. This is how they come from the factory. Oh, well... How much is 20? Do you want the elite, the bond, the core erasable? I want the one that'll last till it gets to Washington, D.C. Well, they all do that. Then give me the cheapest. All right. That'll be 49 cents. Just a minute. I only got 23 cents. Oh. Well, I'm sorry, sir. Ain't you got a single envelope lying about I could barter for? Bart? <laughs> I'm afraid not. Well, what about those envelopes over over here? Well, that's our greeting cards display. I'll just take one of them. You can't buy a greeting card envelope without buying the greeting card. Oh. Well, how much is the greeting card? The cheapest we have is 25 cents. But I told you I only got 23 cents. Well, I guess I could sell it to you for that. What's the matter now? Can't do it. Why not? Got to have money for a stamp. How much is that? Fifteen cents. Fifteen? I don't want to send it special delivery. Fifteen is what it costs to mail a letter nowadays. 
But I got to mail this check back. How much is the check for? Ten thousand dollars. You're carrying a check for ten thousand dollars and you don't have enough money for a packet of envelopes? The check ain't mine. Belongs to the government. I see. Would you excuse me for a moment? Uh, perhaps I can find you a single envelope in the back. Clara, this is Ned Hames. Uh, get me the sheriff's office quick. I'll tell you all about it later. Just get me the sheriff. <laughs> Hello, Ned. Why, Sheriff? Is this the fellow here? What's going on? Are you carrying a government check for $10,000? How'd you know? Can I see it? Oh, Lordy, I guess so. Mm -hmm. U.S. Treasury. Looks okay enough. Anders Fritzen. That's you? Yeah. Well, I don't see what the problem was, Ned. Well, it just seemed odd. If I can just see some identification, Mr. Fritzen. I don't carry any. You don't care? Why not? Ain't no need to. But... That, that's against the law. Why? I know who I am. Have you got any way of proving this check is yours? It is mine. I mean, it ain't. It ain't mine to accept. Uh -huh. That's uh -huh. why I... I think you had better come with me over to the station. <laughs> I tell you, my name is Anders Fritzen. Now let go of me, you Cossack. Okay, we're here. Well, no ID, huh? I'll tell you, I don't know what to do. Now, everybody carries ID. You sure you don't have ID? Holy tamale, no. Is that all you can say? Well, this check is addressed to the Calvin Post Office. Is that where you're from? Yes. You don't by any chance know the uh, postman up there, do you? Clarence Egan? Never heard of him. Oh, that's too bad. Not in my book, it ain't. Because I got him locked up in that cell back there. Egan? What for? I caught him poaching. Ha! Serves him right. Well, sounds to me like you do know him. Uh, Mr. Egan. Listen here, Sheriff. Trapping game is the right of every American. Uh, c come out here a moment, would you? Oh, uh, I'm afraid. No, no, you're not. I uh, want you to identify someone for me. Andy. Don't speak to me. Well, well, what are you doing here? I told you if I came into town, they'd lock me up, didn't I? Well, I guess that takes care of that. I'm satisfied. Here is your check, old-timer. Sorry for the trouble. <laughs> trouble. Okay, Mr. Regan, back into the cell. Well, well, no, no, come no, on, no. Come now, on. wait. Uh, uh, Andy. I got nothing to say to you. Uh, Andy, I need 200 bucks for my bail. What? Oh, no. Now, you, you got that check. I'm sending it back to the government. But, but he's going to keep me locked up. Since you tricked me off my land three days ago, I've been drunk, snowblind, shanghaied, incarcerated, drugged, overheated, accused of being an invalid, old, a pauper, and now I've been arrested. Oh, come on, Sheriff. Now, you, you've got to let me go. H how is the mail going to get delivered? Okay, all right. I, I, I don't know if I could stand having you around until you're hearing anyway. You'd just be back here on the 29th at 9 a.m., you hear? Oh, thank you, Sheriff. Thank you. Come on, Andy. I'll give you a ride home. What are you doing down here, anyhow? Just a minute. Sheriff, do you have an envelope you could give me? An envelope? Yeah, there on the desk. And a stamp. I can pay for them. Yeah, it's on the house. Andy, what are you doing? That's the check? I know. I'm mailing it back. Bureau of Engine Affairs. Andy, Andy, wait a minute. You, you, you no, you got to keep that money. There. Sheriff, would you send this out with your next mail? Why don't you just give it to Mr. Egan? He's a postal employee. Would you trust him with your mail? Okay. Okay, I'll mail it. Now, the both of you, get out of here. <laughs> didn't know. I, I figured you'd made your way home, you know. That hospital almost did me in. Well, why'd you send that check back? 
Because the land ain't the government's to give money for. Oh, you ain't no more Indian than I am, and you know it. They never had nothing to do with you. Maybe. And you never have nothing to do with them, neither. When Cecil Holden the day died, old Marie begged me to fetch you over there to help her bury him proper, and you wouldn't go. The public health officials finally had to come and take the body away from her. Everybody figured she must be crazy. She was crazy. Both of them. A couple of old drunks. They was weak. Well, it seems to me... How it seems to you ain't how it is. I know I'm a crazy old half-breed lumberjack born New Year's Day 1900 into a century didn't have no place for me. But I can survive. I know how to do that. When you come out next spring, I'll be there, just like always. I, uh... I, I ain't coming out next spring. What? I asked Portia to marry me. Out loud? Of course, out loud. What'd she say? Yes. Oh. Well, I figured you'd be all right with that money, you know. Oh. Well, I'll be all right. We, uh... We're going to move down to Bryant and reopen her old man's gas station. With all them tourists coming up, they they all drive them low-efficiency cars, you know. We we ought to do real well. Well, I hope you do. Andy, here... Here's your turn-off. This is all the further I can go now the snow's here. You know... It's hard to believe when I got this corner of the reservation all them years ago that the land was cleared and ready for farming. And now, look, the trees are almost touching over my cabin. You'd never know the white man had been through here at all. Your hands was on the axe, too, Andy. I know. I helped to destroy the land my mother's people lived on. Someone should have cut my hands off the day I followed my father's kind into the camp. It's growed back okay. It ain't the same. Aspen, popple. Nothing like the virgin pine we took. Thanks, Egan. Uh, Portia and I can come out to see you this winter, you know, on on our snowmobiles. No. I don't want them machines on my land. Well, we'll get up to see you. Bryant's 40 miles away. Uh, Andy, why is it you never took that money? I, I mean, before when it was offered. There was 11 kids in our family after my mother died. When my father ran off, I was responsible for them because I was the oldest. By the time I was free of that, I was 39 years old, and I was so far behind, there wasn't any point in even trying to catch up. I got no complaints, but I couldn't take so much money. Not now. The, uh, the wedding's New Year's Day. Huh. That's my birthday. We... We could send somebody. No. Huh. I wouldn't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> Egan. Yes? All the best. Right here. It ain't the government's, and it ain't the Ojibwe either. It's mine. I spent half my life destroying it, and half my life watching it mend. And it's mine. Do you 
budget shop has a vested interest in value. Vested dresses and vested skirt and pants sets in sizes 8 to 18. Styled just right for spring. They're romantic flounce dresses topped by vests. Tunic pantsuits coupled with vests. Also the tunic and skirt smartly finished with a vest. The vest. The season's fashion basic. Lots of exciting print and solid color combinations. So you can be choosy. Invest in fashion. Invest in value. Vested dresses and vested skirt and pants sets in the budget shop at most larger Sears retail stores. I'm a mattress who knows what to wear. Solid color percale sheets from Sears Medley Collection, of course. This gorgeous sheet I'm wearing speaks for itself. The color is called Indian Sand. Isn't that stunning? I wear sheets of royal blue, lemon yellow. Sears has a dazzling selection of up to 24 colors. And the fit? Well, just look. I can't understand why mattresses wear anything but these smooth permapress sheets. Honestly, darling, I wouldn't wear anything else. Sizes from Twin to King in most Sears retail stores and in the catalog. When I need advice, I go to my mom. Why not? It's free. Now that I'm married and moving into a new house, I want all the advice I can get. So when mom says shop Sears, I listen. You should. Sears is a great help on those big items you'll need for your new home. Major appliances like washers, dryers, and refrigerators. They'll deliver, install, and service. I always depend on Sears. You should, too. You've been listening to Sears Radio Theater, brought to you five nights a week by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops. Final Fall was written by Percy Granger, produced and directed by Fletcher Markle. Your host was Lorne Green. Our stars were William Shallert and Parley Bear. Also heard were Lorene Tuttle, Don Diamond, Dawes Butler, and Bill Zucker. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. Art Gilmore speaking. The Elliot Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI. Hey, you out there, especially you, motorcycle champ, I got something to lay on you about safety. Oh, I know what you're thinking. Wearing helmets is dumb. Because what can happen? You could be wiped out. But that's cool. Real cool. But it ain't all that can happen. You can get epilepsy. You know from epilepsy? Yeah, you probably heard some wrong things. I bet you don't know one of the major causes of epilepsy is bad head injuries suffered in accidents. Dig it. I know what I'm talking about. I used to have my own motorcycle group. I wiped out, smashed my head, and now I have epilepsy. It's nothing to be ashamed of, but it didn't have to happen. Epilepsy. It's not what you think. So before you give up that helmet, you better learn something. Get the facts. Contact your local epilepsy chapter or write Epilepsy Foundation of America, Washington, D.C., 20036. What in the World Happened in February? Brought to you by your local Navy recruiter. February is Admissions Day for Massachusetts, admitted as our sixth state in 1788, Oregon as our 33rd state in 1859, and Arizona became our 48th state in 1912. In February 1789, George Washington received a unanimous electoral vote for President of the United States. The University of Virginia was founded by Thomas Jefferson in February 1819. The 13th Amendment, which abolished slavery, was signed in February 1865. In February 1878, Thomas Edison patented the phonograph. The National Baseball League was created in February 1886. Construction of the U.S. Navy's first ship built as an aircraft carrier, the USS Ranger, was authorized in February 1929. Astronaut John Glenn was the first American to orbit the Earth in February 1962. That's what happened in February, brought to you by your local Navy recruiter. For more information, call the Navy toll-free in the continental U.S., 800-841-8000, in Georgia, 800-342-5855. Tomorrow, 
Andy Griffith will be your host with a charming comedy. I called again, introducing myself as Adnan Mubarak Sophine, finance minister of Kuwait. Then I was brushed off again. I began to wonder how many finance ministers, presidents, or other assorted possible clients had ever called and been told to go stuff a cabbage. Our program tomorrow will be The Troublemaker and may be heard on this station as part of the Sears Radio Theater.